This is Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog on TSN 1050. Here we go, Overdrive off and running, TSN 1050 online, TSN 1050.ca, your home smart speaker. Brian Hayes, Kara Waglin in studio. What's happening, Kara? I'm already off to a good start because I figured out the mic. Did not flub the mic right off the bat like I usually do, so yeah. I'm growing as a broadcaster. Always important to know how to turn the microphone on. <laughs> Rule number Somewhat one. Somewhat of a requisite <laughs> if you want to be on the show. Or I guess with SportsCenter, you don't control your own mic. Um, no, not really. Like we have, you a, have a, a cough, cough button. button. Yeah, that's about it. That's that's all the control they give us. Yeah, on Sports Center. Outside of that, like the director or whatever, they'll be kind of dealing with that. I guess we have an and audio person who is their that's their job controlling yeah. our mic, which they could really sue us. If yeah, they, they could. To. Well, we do too. Like JP could technically rip us off the air right now if he wanted to. He could basically do anything. Yeah. Like we are putting our careers in the hands of JP every time we come on the air. It's true. Well, on Sports Center, it's interesting because every time we go to like a sound up or like a, a package, an essay, something to sound on tape, our mics could still be hot, but our audio person brings them down. So we're not hitting anything to mute ourselves. We just understand that our mics will be brought down. Sometimes your mic isn't brought right, down. Right, exactly. And there's been times where it's like, oh no, you can hear yourself and you're like, am I still hot? Well, the classic. TV move and you see it all the time is generally it's like a quick hit where you're throwing it back to something else. You see it in baseball all the time, right? Quick update coming up a second intermission. We're going to tell you why blah, blah, blah here back to these two guys. And then they do the turn and keep talking like as if they have to keep the conversation going, but they know their mics are down. It's totally unnecessary. And I'm convinced they're not saying anything. I'd like, I'm convinced that's a production yes. that the producer's like, here's what we want you to do is pretend that all you're doing is talking up here all the time, and we're actually interrupting your conversation for you to plug something and then throw it back to the booth, and then you continue your conversation. It's the whole we're, con we're casual, we're conversational, we're totally just hanging having out, a great watching time. the game, just and totally we'll get right back to you. Oh, forgot that we were even on. Hey, coming up in the seventh intermission, and then once <laughs> it throws, the immediate move over and continue the conversation. Some you see it on talk it shows all the time. Yes. Like on The View, they do that all the time. The talk right? to break. Oh, all the time. Whoopi will be like, all right, coming up next, we got this. And then their mics will be down, and then they'll keep talking as if that's necessary. I, I mean, I it's don't It's completely mind it. unnecessary, and I'm convinced it's completely <laughs> bogus. I don't mind it if you can pull it off, and it actually looks natural. But you're right. There are <laughs> the broadcasts where you can tell they're just like, let's pretend we're talking to yeah. each other. Yeah, let's pretend like we're really engaging and we really like each other and we're going to continue a conversation that just is yeah. so important. Even hey, though I the said mics something really off. funny. Laugh now. Yeah, yeah. that's the classic TV <laughs> move. And I, I, I kind of wish I had the opportunity to do that, but we don't have that opportunity. Like once we hit a break, we're gone. Yeah. You know, it's we're out. Really get, they do that on the Jay show sometimes. He'll do the, the on cam to break and. But when you're by yourself and you're filling in for Jay, there's yeah. no to talk to. You I kinda, guess that's it. Yeah, like it's kind of just awkward. If Jay's in the chair or whatever, then that's one thing. Yeah. yeah. They roll bumpers on us. They don't want to give us that opportunity. We're yeah, not that's always that. awkward too. Like the the countdown to live, because you, like that's it, right? As you know, Kara. Once it's like you hit one, it's go time. It's, unless unless you're taping something, then if you mess it up, you can sure. technically restart. But if you're live, and I've been doing that a little bit recently, doing Sports Center hits. Like, I'm trying to make sure I'm presentable or make right. sure, like, I might clear my... Have you my done live hits? I've done live hits, how yeah. Are, how, how does that feel? Like, live, live, like live is television is... I live live. Like, that's what I sure, do for a living. Sure, but it's very different. Like, radio, you're not really having to time yourself out. Like, I feel like that's the biggest difference when you move to TV. It's you have short sound bites. You have to hit a time. Yes. You cannot go over. You that is say what you got to say concisely. Very valid, and I am guilty of that, and I know I have been guilty of that. You know, I've done a limited amount of hits, but a couple of times I know I'm getting too wordy, I'm talking too much, I'm going too long with an answer, and that, that has to be rectified. And I'm trying to get better at that. But, like, if they're counting you down, it's like, all right, you're coming up here, three, two, one, and I'm trying to do, like, <clears throat> make sure you're ready. I'm so nervous that I'm going to overshoot the three, two, one. Yeah, or you're not. Uh, so I still find. Or not be looking at the camera for whatever reason. You're not ready. You I make have some this mistake. every single time before I come to a one shot on cam. Like we have the one shot on cams where you got to like intro something. 
and I can't remember who I was working with the other day, and I thought this happened to everybody. I'm like, don't you hate when this happens? And they looked at me like, are you an idiot? For some reason, right before I'm about to come on camera, I have one of those moments where my entire mouth fills with saliva, and I'm struggling to swallow it all back before mm -hmm. I come on camera. And it's always a race to like two, what, am I going to be able to swallow in time, <laughs> or am I going to come on camera choking on my own spit? Right. Apparently, this doesn't happen to everybody. I guess me. not. That's the thing. Everyone's got a different tick. Yeah. Everyone's got something else. And that's the beauty of live TV, live radio, whatever it happens to be, I guess. Once you're up, you're up. Like on radio, I've had hiccup issues before. You talk about a clock. Like if I know I have 30 seconds and you're starting, you could be in big, big trouble. <laughs> like in like really, actual hiccups? Yes. Oh like I've gosh. had like a hiccup attack where I'm like, how am I going to kill this? Because, I, like, no one really has a remedy as to how you stop hiccups. Yeah. Like, once they've taken over, if you really end up with hiccups or, you know, I got bad allergies, you get into a sneeze attack situation where you know you're up on screen and the mics have to go on. I had a, I had a We're hiccup. We're living in a dangerous world. <laughs> I had a hiccup issue with Michael Irvin once years ago. We were doing a hit, and we did, like, a weekly hit for, like, three years. I knew Michael well. And he had hiccups. But these hiccups, he said, had lasted for, like, three days. That like is they weren't terrifying. going anywhere. That and is so terrifying. We tried to wait them out a couple times. We must have restarted that hit because we were taping it five or six times because we would get so far in and he would start hiccuping. And we ended up just having to like power through. And you hear him hiccup a couple times. I'm like, you need to just like yeah. push through. So did you acknowledge the hiccup? Yeah. I mean, at that you point, that's kind of what you do. Point, you make right? fun of it and, and you move on. Yeah. But that like was the when, only way we get through. When in doubt, be self deprecating. On, listen, it is what it is. You know, stuff's going to pop up. So I'm interested, how do you find, because I know you're used to having someone in your ear, but they don't always necessarily talk when you're talking. Right. And with live television, they do. So how do you find the whole, like, IFB situation <laughs> where you have there. a voice in your it's head the whole there. time? It's getting there. Like, especially with them, like, throwing to different tape, right? right? Like, if you're talking about, last night I was talking about William Nylander, and I could hear, um, you know, I could hear whoever it was being like, all right, roll this cue this roll, green, roll that one, roll yeah. this and i'm like trying to <laughs> grind through a take on willie <laughs> nylander um it's getting better i think 10 years ago it may have been i might have stopped 10 years ago and said guys right off can't be doing this right now trying to grind through this but uh, no it's all good we have some analysts who just don't even want an ifb in yeah like i don't want you to tell me what camera i'm on yeah. i don't want you to tell me when the viz is in i will like it just messes them up. I think them. that's easier from that standpoint. Like now I've been on both sides of it. And when I've been doing, you know, sports center hits or I was on with on right last night, I don't need to see the viz. I don't need to know the viz. Like I'm not breaking down a play. Right. Like I'm just going to continue with my thought. You do whatever you want to do. I don't want to know. So I guess I'd fall into that same so that category. Would be easier. Just and let me finish my thought and then go from there. You guys do whatever you want. And because you're not hosting the hit, you don't have to hit the hard time. Not my out. issue. Yeah. Which we know has been an issue sometimes Absolutely. With television. Absolutely. Serious, serious issue. And, uh, yeah, no, it was cool because I, I got to talk um, talk some Leafs with Jay last night, but also talk some Blue Jays. And, nice. you know, Shohei Otani. And I think I understand the Jays are not going to do it. But it, I, I don't want to know that but there's definitively. This, there's like 2%. Yes. It keeps the hope alive. Exactly. Yes. I don't want to know definitively that it's not going to happen. I, I understand their conservative nature. And Buster mm -hmm. Olney was on the morning show today. We had Steve Phillips on yesterday, and Phillips said Shapiro and Atkins do not operate that way, right? They, they are willing to be big swingers. Like, they will, they paid a price for Barrios. They sure. paid a price for Varsho. But those were guys they had under control that they were going to have under control for a long time. Shohei Otani is a clear-cut rental. Possibly could stick around long-term. More yes. than likely wouldn't. More than likely, ownership would not be willing to pony up that kind of money and that kind of commitment. So you're talking to true rental at a massive price. I understand that doesn't really jive with what they've been known as throughout their careers. But what I'd like to believe is they look at their team and the window that they have built towards, which is right now, mm -hmm. like they are built to win right now. You look at what else is happening throughout the American League and how it appears to be pretty wide open Right now, for someone to step through and and possibly take over the reins, and you're coming out of a pandemic, you're 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 coming out of renovations to the park. Like, there's a lot of different elements that I think should factor in here, as opposed to just simply looking at the baseball operations and the game sheet and the whiteboard three-year plan. 
But is this not like this is so this is where the two percent of hope creeps in for me because you're right, Shapiro and Atkins historically they're not big players at the deadline. They don't tend to make huge moves at the deadline. They do like to make their signings in the offseason and do kind of go kind of that route. But we know that the Jays were on Shohei Otani's initial list when he was coming to MLB. They got scratched off the list pretty quickly. <laughs> we know he wants to go to so West is, Coast. What is that worth? But here's where know. like my brain starts to go. Maybe there's a little hope. Okay, will Shohei stay past this year? Probably not. He wants to be on a West Coast team. Uh, we know this about him. He's very regimented in his own he wants his own control over everything Mm -hmm. um but we know the angels don't want to trade him to a divisional rival we know probably not a west coast team that they want to look at um so maybe this is like a Kawhi situation where it's like your only opportunity to get him is in a trade yeah and then you work on convincing him to stay it's a once in in a lifetime opportunity right and if you're ever going to spend on a player and break the bank for a player Shohei Otani is it absolutely it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and if he walks so be it you still had him in a Blue Jay uniform those you know pictures and uh, they're going to be scattered around the Rogers Center for the rest of time. The jerseys are going to—I don't know that they have the prospects to make that. No, that, deal. and that's a different story. Like, do they have the stomach to give up what they might have to give up, and do they have the prospects that could match other teams? But how many teams are really, really in this to the point where they'd spend that much on a rental? You know, you—you you mentioned maybe they don't want to—they don't want to trade him. The Angels don't want to trade him within the division. Mm-hmm. If they don't want to do that, they definitely don't want to trade him to the Dodgers. Like, no, definitely oh, they've don't. already the Angels have already said they're not trained to the Dodgers. Well, and the Dodgers have one of the deepest systems in baseball. Mm-hmm. So if you scratch them off, if you scratch Houston and Texas off, Texas, a deep system as well, that's within the division. If yeah. they don't want to do that, yeah. you're talking the five teams in the AL East, you know Tampa's not gonna do it. I don't think Baltimore would do it. It's too early in their in their run. Baltimore's a dark horse, man. I, that, you never know. They you are, never know. but I don't think any team in the central really feels they're that good. So you you're, you're talking Braves, the Yankees, maybe, maybe Yankees, oh, maybe man, Milwaukee, that would, would that not maybe be worst San case Francisco. Scenario? I, uh, of course it would be, of course it would be. Um, but it's interesting the big names that are out there, like Otani. Watching him hit that home run last night and the bat flip, like he's getting, he's getting more and more swag. I think. Well, he's starting to. Well, I think the experience of WBC. Yeah. I think that opened a lot of eyes for a lot of players. Like same thing with Mike Trout. This is what this can feel like. This is what a taste of winning or competition at a certain level feels like. It's eye opening. You can see how much that kind of scale and competing on that level means to these guys. So I think you're starting to see a little more personality from him, which is interesting. Um, I don't know the bat flip. We ran the bat flip a lot. I love that last bat night. Flip. I, I love. Like what else does he have? He plays for the Angels. I hear you, but then it was like we, we went so big on this bat flip. We showed it so many times, and I was I'm watching it for like the fourth time we've sh- shown it on the show, and I'm like, is this in an ALCS? Like, is this a clinching game? Like, it felt a little too a little too big, but at the same time, like just technically. One of the best bat flips I've seen. The no look, like oh. he got distance. He got like we and, measured and it. it was that was like twenty eight feet or field something field like that. Too, yeah, right? it was a crazy bat flip. Now Ben Verlander did tweet out saying that he thought it was the best bat flip ever, best photo of bat flip. No, and man. you know Toronto fans yeah. are getting into their feelings about that. No but. chance. No, uh, listen, it's uh, it's Otani, but Bautista is is clearly number one because it was Game Five of the ALDS. It LDS. mattered. It absolutely mattered, and in the buildup of game of the seventh inning, what had happened in the top of the inning. Speaking of which, you see Rugnet Odor was designated for yeah. assignment like an hour ago. I got to be honest. I thought he was already, he's been on his way out of the league. He, for it's shocking now. he's been in the league yes. this long. And it makes me believe somehow he'll stick around. But I'm assuming he flew into town like he's been up here with the Padres. I don't know. Is he? Is, is that he not a, the worst move ever, making him fly all the way into Toronto in a city that he probably doesn't like very much? God, doesn't have good sure memories. he in. understood what and was coming. And then you're like, get back on the plane, head home. See you later. Designated for assignment, Rugnet Odor. Who That's did not like the awful. bat flip, was not no. a fan of the bat flip at <laughs> all, and he made sure Jose Bautista heard about it or felt about it the next year. But, no, not the greatest bat flip of all time, but it is Otani. It is versus the Yankees. I believe it tied the game last night. They end up winning an extra inning. Yeah. It was one of those things, though. Like, it was such an Angels moment because yeah. we're watching That's the it. game in extras, and we're like, they could have this massive bat flip, this great moment from Otani, and just like the script always goes – the Angels almost lost it. Like Probably was, still lose. Yeah, yeah they ended up pulling it lose. out. But, so 
shockingly, they found a way to win for once. Like, well, I think they had lost seven of eight coming into last night. Right. Like, they're terrible. They are terrible. Really and, bad. and listen, the Yankees aren't far off. I, I saw this uh, earlier today with the Yankees losing last night. This courtesy of ESPN Stats and Info. The Yankees are in sole possession of last place in the American League East through 95 games for the first time. You want to give a guess? And let, maybe you've seen the stat. Um, How long do you think it goes since they... Well, the season after they won their last World Series, didn't they bottom out and they were like the worst team in the league? And then they came back the next year and competed. I don't know which year that was. Mm -hmm. I'm not good with years. It's a long but time it ago. It's, it's like we're like talking... Like in the 2000s? Earlier. 1990. Was that the year after they won the World Series? One no, of the years after they won the World no, Series? No, it wouldn't have been. And or one of the years before they won. They that had was, one That was one before off. the Jeter stuff. I think what you're thinking of is they bottomed out late. But this, this, this was way after Jeter, I'm thinking of. Yes. This was, again, through 95 games, the Yankees are in sole possession of last place in the American League East for the first time since 1990. 33 years where that doesn't mean they've won the division every year, but they've been lurking forever. And it doesn't mean they're out of it yet. I mean, it's still early enough. Tampa lost again last night. Uh, Baltimore lost last night. Like, the Jays are still lurking. The Jays are lurking with the division. Uh, that is not out of the realm of no. possibility that they can still make some noise there. But, like, Otani is the name that is carrying everything, and it will through the trade deadline. But the Marcus Stroman report over the weekend, yeah. I think, is even more compelling. And I will say this. I don't see him in Toronto. I don't see Atkins in Chicago. Based on what I heard on his way out, I don't but see them bringing him in. I don't feel like the reason – so I've heard – I've seen all the reports that they're kicking tires on him. He's having a career year. He's having a great Good year. Good for him. Great Fantastic. year. Fantastic. Um, I don't think the reason that they wouldn't bring him back is a character thing. I think that when he was first on his way out of town, he was not a personality that you maybe want to be a loud vocal voice in the clubhouse when guys like Bo and Vladdy are really young mm -hmm. and impressionable. Things are different now. Strowman's older now. He's a little more mature. Bo and Vladdy are older. That young core is older. They found who they are. I don't think that it's a it's a personality character issue in the clubhouse anymore. I don't think that he is a strong enough figure in what has already been an established clubhouse to really make that big of a difference. I don't know that they necessarily need him. Like Hin Jim Ryu comes back. Are you you got a six man rotation you're looking at? Like, yes, there's some questions. Mm -hmm. Him and Noah hold it. Is Gosman healthy? Where is Ryu gonna be? But you now have some leeway to maybe use one of those guys as a trade chip. Yeah. To maybe, you know what I mean? You can roll yeah. with a five man. So unless Stroman is going to be a massive upgrade over something that you're going to use in a trade, sure. But I don't know that they necessarily need him. Well, we were talking about this yesterday. Like where would he slot in, in the rotation? Let's say they acquired Stroman today in the playoff started tonight. They, they bypass the wild card. They go right into the ALDS. You got a, basically a three man rotation, okay. maybe a four man rotation. Gosman's going to get the ball game yeah. one, assuming health. I think Bassett would get game two. I think. Yeah. But but the way Strowman's pitching, he'd I be mean, in contention for that. Like, he definitely would, would, even though Barrios has been very good this year and has not gotten enough love, for myself included. I got a mic in front of me every day. I could be pumping his tires. I'm not. no questions about Barrios. So that's the thing. I because feel like of with... one bad year, though. When you think about it, Kara, he was really, really good in Minnesota. Like, really solid Not the entire time, though. Like, he was. More or less. He was like a mid-three year A, like, pretty collectively throughout his time there. And even when he got here, that second half, it wasn't great. There were yeah. ups and downs for sure. I just it's feel just, like there's always a little bit with him and Kikuchi. Yes, they. I mean, Kikuchi's. Kikuchi is a he's guy. He's hanging on. And he's not making the. He's not no. pitching for you in the playoffs. He's probably your long relief guy going to if the bullpen. That, if um, that. But the, uh, the, the, the factor that puts me over the edge in putting Stroman in as the third guy is not only is he pitching really well, he is a big game guy. He yes. He wants it. I think he'd be ready for else. Toronto. I, I think there's a chance he ends up in the AL East. That is for sure. I could see Baltimore kicking tires on him, and he'd step right in and possibly be – he'd certainly be one of their you know, top two guys in yeah. that, that playoff rotation. Um, I don't think Tampa will do it. That's not how they operate. The Yankees, I don't think they'd want him back in New York. I mean, he kind of – Oh, he'd love to go to the Yankees. It was loud and crazy with yeah. the Mets and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I could see him – I could see Baltimore kicking tires yeah. for sure. And I, mean, I could Baltimore's see him embracing right there, eh? the American so. League. And the American League East, absolutely. But I think you're right about the maturity of the clubhouse, and it's one guy. Like, if your clubhouse is so weak or on such thin ice that one big personality is going to push it over the top, you're in big trouble anyway. Yeah. So I, I think they could find a way to bring him in. I just 
I'm with you. I don't I don't know if they need him. Yeah. Um, he would be an upgrade. It would be an upgrade, though. But it's That's the thing. It would be an embarrassment of riches in a exactly. way, even though he's not a true horse, right? It would be Gosman. Gosman is the clear-cut ace of the staff right now. Obviously, they're hoping Manoa can, can get back to where he was. We'll see what he's got yeah. tonight at home against a pretty potent offense or at least potentially talented offense in, in San Diego. I feel like... San Diego is one of those teams where their record doesn't really indicate how good that team is. Well, on paper, they should be a lot better. Yeah. Like, easily the most They're disappointing team in the league. They're better than where they stand in their division. Yeah. Them and sure. the Mets, like, easily the most disappointing team in the league. Um, but you look at look at where the Jays are at. Their bullpen's been very good lately. Bullpen's been Very great. good. I think they'll bolster that because in the playoffs, you can always have more arms. Yeah, I think it's Chad know, Green. You're going to have Green come yeah. come into the fold at some point here, That'd which nice could be significant. Romano healthy, and I think their bullpen's good. Like, if they can get – I know everyone's been talking a right-handed bat. Um, I mean, a left-handed bat that can pitch would be great. But a I'm right-handed saying. bat with a little Shohei bop Ohtani. in it, sure, let's yep. take that. I mean, we'll just keep talking ourselves into the fact that Shohei Otani is not going to get me happen. off this. Like, on August 1st, I'm going to be disappointed. If he's not a Blue Jay, I'm going to be disappointed. You, and I'm not here. bracing for it. I, I wouldn't put money on it happening. I don't think it will happen. You're not ordering the custom jersey just yet. No, but I think it would be electric. I think it would be the most buzzworthy trade in modern Toronto sports. And, like, I think it would blow the Kawhi deal out of the water. Oh, for sure. Which happened five years ago today, for the record. Wow. Five years ago today, it would blow the David Price deal out of the record. Um, out of the water. The Ari Dickey the, package acquisition. Oh, big year. time. Oh, Over, yeah. Even the, that, that Marlins deal, which was the first big one with Reyes and, you know, Burley coming up. Uh, Josh Johnson, I think, was in that. Mm-hmm. Like, that was huge because that was Anthopolis and doing it, you know, for the first time. And that got the, got the ball rolling on them going after other pieces, including R.A. Dickey later in that offseason. But Otani's a completely different beast. Like, he, he shows up, and you could make the argument. In fact, I think it's an easy argument to make. He immediately becomes the greatest individual player that has ever played in Toronto. He's he's not just a general re- generational talent. He's a once-in-a-generation. Yeah. Like, once-in-a-lifetime That includes talent. the Leafs, like the don't. Raptors, yeah, everything. Yeah, you just don't see it. Like, the marketability of him is unbelievable. And he's actually coming to town at the end of the month. That's right. So, if you want to hear the worst luck ever that I have, I go out and get tickets. I'm like, this is a nice little date day. Mm-hmm. Go with my husband. We'll get a babysitter. We'll go down and watch the Angels. I sat there like a complete homer two months ago and lined up the rotation and counted out starts and everything, knowing like things change. Yeah. He was lined up until the All-Star break. He was lined up to pitch on the Sunday when I'm going to the game. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to get to watch Shohei Otani. I will be forever be able to say that I watched him pitch. Mm-hmm. Something over the All-Star break shifted, and now he's pitching on the Friday. And my tickets are meaningless. Yeah. Like, sure, You'll he You'll get to hit. see him hit. Sure. Right? You'll get to see him hit. You would assume he'll get up there and hit. Which I, I think has more flair than pitching. I, th- I think seeing him pitch historically will mean more. That you well, got you to see, see both. Him. Y- yeah, exactly. Well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. But, like, when he's not pitching, you know you're going to see him hit. Right. Or likely he's going to be in the lineup that day. But the idea of seeing this unicorn pitch yeah. live is significant but the idea of him making magic happen it's more likely he hits a big home run sure. and if that happens on the sunday i think you'd prefer that ticket over even if he pitches pretty well on the friday night i mean knowing my luck trade rumors will heat up and he'll get scratched he on the sunday well and he won't play at all yeah he that's very the kind of well luck could. i have yeah that's that's some that's <laughs> must see tv though when otani rolls through town uh messi will be here likely next year that's probably the next big one that you Are circle we get into who's bigger messi or otani <laughs> I mean, that's actually a good question. It's probably messy. It's, people in L.A. don't even care about Otani. Yeah. I yeah, mean, they, they I, I really think Otani's huge, but I love baseball. But you're a baseball freak. and that Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. if you're big into sports and, and baseball in particular, you're well aware of Otani. Um, but he but, doesn't have the star power. No, exactly. Neither are American, though, right? Like, you get out of the States. Yeah. You know, we've had this chat before. We had it a few weeks ago on the show, like Messi versus Brady, v- Messi versus LeBron. And speaking of which, the O Dog is going to join us in about five minutes. Okay, so he we'll was very on strongly on the side of Messi, right? And you took absolutely. Brady. Absolutely, I, I took Brady all day, and you saw what happened in that Publix down in Miami. I mean, that's case dismissed. What was the Publix? Brady's deal? not walking around Publix 
and not being harassed oh. by people and constantly being asked for but pictures. But do we know that the public wasn't it. like, I didn't see the photos of the footage. Was the public shut down for No, for there were people walking around. Publix doesn't shut down for mess. I mean, he's you can't also, get a Publix to shut down. He's also newly there. Like he might, yeah. they might not be looking for messy in their local grocery store. I hear you, but you're never looking for anybody. Tom Brady, LeBron James, like it would be a shock to the system if you saw them. But if you saw LeBron, you'd be like, yeah. that's LeBron, right? Yeah, be more recognizable. Off. Brady, more recognizable. LeBron, more recognizable. Yeah. But also, you got to factor in, and I would argue that height matters in this, because when you're out and about, yeah. you're not expecting to see professional athletes. You see a six foot five guy walk in, you're like, oh, that's somebody. Who is it? You may not know. You may not recognize him right away. Mm -hmm. Messi's walking in. Lost kinda, in the he's crowd. He's unassuming, yeah, you know? Yeah, very much so. Lost in the crowd. But if someone said, oh, there's Messi... There would be a swarm. Yeah, I I think most people would understand. Most people would understand that. Not everyone. Though. I got to side with O. I think Messi is. No, I don't think so. Embrace. There was a TikTok video going around too of people asking, like, just on the street. Yeah. Random stop. Oh, what do you think of Messi coming? And people are like, I have no idea who that is. No. I way. think you're overvaluing how much Americans care about stuff outside of the United States. That that was my argument. Is Americans care about America and Americans? That's what they care yeah, about. Yeah, you can't argue that. Messi's <laughs> not American, and he's never played there. He's never lived there. And he's not on the radar. Like He's not starting Sports Center every single night. Tom Brady is. LeBron James is. I hate when you make valid points. It's a very valid point. All right, Barry Trotz will join us just after 5 o'clock. Jason Grilly coming up, one of our favorites. Luke Wilson as well. But the O-Dog will join us later this hour. Kara Waglin is in here. I'm Brian Hayes. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. I need you to hold on. Heaven is a place not too far away. We all know I should be the one to say we all make mistakes. Overdrive continues, brought to you by Fando, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Open Championship Week. Be making Ooh. picks tomorrow on the show. I don't know how I feel Rory about Rory coming off a win. I'd like I to see McIlroy like win. Rory. Yeah. Oh, man, I did a deep dive earlier today. Deep dive. The Open Championship. Um, yeah, I like Rory's chances big time. Well, he won at this course. That was the last time. Yeah, in 2014. Yeah. Like, yeah. This course plays well to his strengths. Coming off a win. Mm -hmm. I like Rory for this. I, John Rom likes Rory for this. Yeah. You see John Rom's comments? Oh, Who comes yeah. out there when Pumping you're in the, the field? Pumping the tires of Rory McIlroy. I'd love to see him get the fifth. Yeah, we'll see. All right. All right. Other players are cheering for him. Yeah. Well, listen, I think they like him on the PGA Tour. I, I don't think live guys are He takes all the him. bullets for them, why wouldn't he? Absolutely. Although now he's not talking anymore. Um, anyway, let's let's get some picks here from uh, our main man, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill. You liking uh, McElroy this week, or is that too obvious for you? I don't like McElroy this week. I love oh. McElroy <laughs> this week. And I mean love. Ooh, interesting. And I love Rom. I think yeah. it's just one of the big dogs that win this golf tournament. Like mm -hmm. Rom, Scheffler. I mean, up. maybe this fraud Shoffley maybe finally gets something. I'm, I'm sick of picking him in majors, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he won the Scottish Open last year. So... I'm kind of thinking maybe he shows up in some type of lengthy environment, but I just, I'm tired of picking that guy. He's always like has some kind of like secondary sexy pick or it's like, I mean, he's taken a bunch yeah. of times. It's like Shoffley, this guy, he's just got this name in this game. That's so good. And you're like, I'm taking him and he never does it. It's the same. Him and Cantley are the same guy. Like they're, oh, yeah. they're always ranked in the top five, top seven lock rider cup. You yeah, know. and there's always a couple guys on the golf channel that say, this is his week. <laughs> yeah, and it never happens. This is his week, and I'm like, you just made me believe that, and it's never his week. No. I don't think this is his week either. I don't think honest. so either. I, I, I'm, I'm with you with one of the big boys, which shockingly, Scheffler seems to come in third when you talk about that. Like, McElroy's getting all the love because of what he just did and, and yeah. what he represents and what he did last year at the Open. And then John Rahm, because of what happened at the Masters and, and his he's ability. he's coming in rested. And he's this coming in Rahm. red hot. But Scheffler is the guy who I guarantee you will be in it. Yeah. Right? Dude, he's, he's in not it. even playing well. No. And he finishes top five. All the time. Like, this guy hits it like Jack Nicholson is prime. 
what he's doing with the same putter, and I'm a putter freak, like get just try a different putter. Because if he starts rolling the rock, those guys honestly don't have a chance. No, That's the he mind-boggling top, part. He's yeah, not even playing that well. It and he's not even playing good. It's disgusting how good this guy hits the ball. You're right, though. If he showed up with a mallet, these guys would freak. <laughs> They'd be like, Dude, this guy's going to roast us. Anything, anything. If he just starts rolling the rock, he'll, he'll kill all those guys. Yeah, man. he will. Yeah, he'll Tiger Woods this thing, man. He really could. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. You know who else? You know my boy Tommy Fleetwood. He's been having a great season. Stop. I think this is his home course. I think he played here as a kid a lot. Really? Yes. Sprinkle Dude, on you Tommy. You don't know that. I was going to say, that know. doesn't sound like a true no fact. No knowledge of that. Someone told me and that today. Not and your, you're not, he's not your boy, and you didn't <laughs> say what. You told me face-to-face. The only two words that Tommy Fleetwood said to you the whole time at the Pro-Am, you hit a chip on seven, and he said, golf shot. That's accurate. That is a, that, that is a dead only fact. two things yes. he said to you. Yes. You know how that's like a compliment? If you, yeah. someone hits a great shot, they say, golf shot, yeah. golf shot. That's what he said. I, I, I sizzled a little wedge in there, deep rough. You could barely see the top of the ball. I put it to like six inches. I thought it was going in, and Tommy just said, golf shot. And that was it. He said, pick it up, golf shot. And I said, thank you, Tommy, I will. <laughs> and he was, he's a good man, I'm telling you. Keep him in mind this week. I wouldn't be shocked. Top well, 10. He's just, you know what? You could toss him in there with Shoffley and Kelly yeah. because everyone, like, every time the Open comes around, it's like, Tommy Fleetwood, who hits this little bullet stinger driver, and he compresses the ball, and he's going to keep it low and, and do this and that. He never does squat. No, he usually doesn't end no. up actually following through. Um, you see the Leafs have hired someone else for the front office. Derek Clancy is their fifth assistant GM. I didn't even see that. Yeah, it just came. Well, that's it. You, you gloss over it now because you're like, who else is needed in this front office where – I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about Derek Clancy, and obviously it's a Brad Trilliving hire, and it's one of his first hirings, and I'm sure it's a, a foxhole guy for him, someone he has faith in and someone he trusts, but it's wild how many people are attached to this club, man. Like, how many people, if they actually won a Stanley Cup, how many names can you even get on it? How many people can get into the team picture? Well, you start doing a draw. Your story, you didn't, your name didn't get drawn. You're not yeah, getting sorry. on the Cup. So you're, you're not- trying to tell me that not one – of these current assistant GMs, you know, what's goofy for a market this big. And I couldn't name all the other four assistant GMs. No. Haley Wickenheiser is Gilman still with the team. Like, no, I don't even I don't, know that. No, Pridham is still one of them. I think, I don't know exactly what his title is. Um, it's, I saw it earlier. Someone was posting it. I'm like, I didn't know that. Wasn't sure of that. Okay. That's an interesting title. Like there's a million people. Jobs? Because Haley Wickenheiser is still a doctor, right? Yeah, but she's obviously working with the Leafs and getting paid. I so mean, are these like part-time positions for people? They I got guess. other stuff, other irons in the fire too. Yeah, they but got they're other gonna things. Help what I don't understand is how you could be a doctor, like a real, actual doctor, <laughs> and also be the assistant GM of the Maple Leafs. <laughs> it's I, that's impressive. That's what I don't understand. It's I very really impressive. Don't. I'll give her that. Maybe oh, that's yeah, why they have to bring impressive. someone else in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with the O Dog Jeff O'Neill. So what's going on here? What do you what do you make of your Blue Jays? And I'm making a case hard, man, for Shohei Otani. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think the Jays can stomach that type of a move. I'm not sure they got the assets to do it anyway. But they're red hot. They've won eight of nine. I mean, you're kicking around the city between here and Collingwood. People are starting to buzz again. Uh, I'll tell you one market that I think is going to be sneaky on Otani: the Mariners, man. Watch out for the Mariners. Do you know why? Why is that? Because my guy Ichiro is out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it might have a big influence. I'm telling you, watch out for Seattle. But how could you not be all in on that? And, like, you talk about assets. What the hell kind of assets would it take to get this guy here? Oh, a lot. insanity. Yeah, it would, it, the biggest possible haul you could get for a rental – you're right, though, about Seattle. Like, they were just there for the All-Star game, and he said, I guess he spent the whole offseason mm-hmm. in Seattle. He loves Seattle. West Coast team. Big fan of Seattle. Yeah, like, if you're a Mariners fan, maybe it's not a trade deadline move, but if he hits free agency, I'd love to know what the owner's thinking because now the target's on your back. Yeah. Like, if Otani's kind of sending this subliminal 
message like i want to come so you better find that 600 mil you got to wonder well, if the, the owner's thing. like if this guy's a rental haze it like it, you have to put together a package that's insane you're only making that transaction if he's re-signing with you correct i don't know because i don't because think he's going to do it emptying, anyway i'm not emptying the tank if this guy is just going to play the second half of the season and then leave like oh, I, I disagree i, I, I would think all day he is that big of a talent that i would if all you day. have if you have a chance to even step into the batter's box and take a swing at Otani, you do it. Mm -hmm. Even if you think that there's you know, very little chance. <laughs> this is why I am going to be either an assistant GM or a GM. I'm not keeping him like long term. Yeah. Sorry. Well, the thing is, he's not going to give you that answer anyway. Right. It's, it's a lot like the Kawhi situation. Only half the season is cut off. Because why would he immediately, why would he agree to terms now? It's not going to happen. No. It's going to be a massive negotiation. There's going to be so many T's to cross and I's to dot. Um, at this point, it's likely a, a true rental situation. Now, maybe you okay, could then, sell then, him. If you're smart, Hayes, you've got to figure out what's worth it. Like, And although I do think a lot of general managers, executives, it's, why not? It, like, if you have a quality team and he's the piece that could kind of put you over the top, mm -hmm. go ahead and go all in. Like, you haven't won, like, for organizations that haven't won. Like, it's all about trying to get that one win, that one World Series, the one Stanley Cup. So go ahead and do it. But you have to make sure that you have a quality team. Like, just to, to, to take a shot and have this guy for three months and then lose him, it's pretty risky business, man. Yeah. You it, at least got to be a in gamble. It, for sure. You got to be in it. Saying. You got to have a pulse, man. You got to be at the table at a minimum. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but... Um, you know, there's there's a similar line of thinking here with the Nylander stuff and Matthews. Oh, God, I know, oh, man. God, Listen, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I'm with you. Oh, I, I'm with you. It's You know what I like about this? I like that it's taking time. I like that the Leafs are not, like, they're not on William Nylander's timeline. And to credit Willie, it doesn't sound like he's on their timeline either. But he's got a year left. Like, the Matthews deal feels like a foregone conclusion. It's going to happen. We'll find out what it is, when it is. Sure. Who knows when that's going to happen, unless he's pulling the all-time greatest con job ever, and he's going to backdoor them out of town this time next year. If that happens, wow. Yeah. Like, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. Sounds like Matthews is going to sign, and we'll figure that out. We'll talk about it when it happens. But Willie, like, Nylander's got another year left. The Leafs are going to have a very good team and you got to hold your ground. Like wh why would you buckle now on July 18th? Dude, I thought about it today, Hayes, like, and I don't know the, like I haven't heard any of our people talking about legit numbers that have been tossed around, but if this guy honestly wants anywhere North of the Meyer deal and then I'll, I'll, I'll stay on that because yeah. you look at a guy that played for the Vegas golden Knights this year and he's a little bit older than Nylander. He's 32 years old. His name's Jonathan Marcheseau, okay? He's a skilled guy. He's a goal scorer. Pretty similar to what William Nylander is. And in the playoffs, you're like, you kinda, you're kind of hoping that this guy shows up and plays through the grittiness, the toughness, and gets the job done. And for the most part in his career, he hasn't been like – Con Smythe all, every time Vegas has been in the playoffs, but he's been pretty solid. Mm -hmm. And the guy makes $5 million a year. So why do you want to even attempt to think about paying a guy $10 million for, for for that role? It's just, it's insane. I don't know. It's no, insane. It is. It is. But, and, and again, Willie's probably sitting there saying, I got another year. Let's play it out if, if yeah. need be. And I, I think what Leaf fans need to brace for and what leaf i think the leaf organization needs to be willing to accept as well is maybe he just walks next year like maybe that happens would that be i know I but why would you want him to walk yeah. why wouldn't you just try if, if you got a taker that's somebody that would make a trade for him and i don't know what the hell that would be and i don't want to get in an argument with you in the middle of july about mm -hmm. it but you just move him because i don't want to take the chance we're talking about a guy where the coach has got to kick him in the ass twice a month or three times a month because he's floating out there. What's his mentality and what's his, what's his whole deal? And please don't come at me, people, with all of his stats and how much you love him and his hair and everything else. What's his mentality going to be like if he's just playing out the string and looking to go somewhere else? Well, I, I don't know, and I don't want to find out. Even if you can re-sign him, you can get a deal done. 
are most people not at the point now where we can accept this core isn't working mm -hmm. and is the easiest That's piece to move out not understand. Elander? Yeah. It's so like why is it even in a discussion? Like, move them out. You're, you're right. It's like we've moved past that. Yeah. But I think the, the reason we've moved past it is because the Leafs have indicated they want to keep them right. all. So it's like it's a moot point. You know, I, I, I've been beating that drum for years now, and I think most people have. But what I'm saying here is with Nylander, like I'm sensing all this anxiety, like, oh, I can't go through a year with all that noise, and, and maybe he wants to leave. Maybe he doesn't. And maybe what you need to do is play chicken with this guy and say, listen, I'm going to Stevie Eisenman you, and you're going to play Steven Stamkos. Like, if you really want to be here, this is what you're getting. If you yeah. want to walk, go ahead. Yeah. Like, Eisenman literally walked Stamkos to free agency and said, this is what you got, dude. Like, you make up your mind, and I have such an appreciation for that. And that's what I'm saying here with Willie. Like, if there's a deal to be made, go for it. If it makes sense, go for it. But don't just trade them to trade them, especially if you're not going to get anything in return. But You got time. Put, exactly. Yes. Like, have confidence that this guy wants to be here, and he's playing a negotiating game right now. There's a game of chicken going on. Next June 30th, hey, Willie, this is it, man. Yeah. There's a chance he signs yeah. it because he wants to stay. And, Hayes, there's something – Here's something to chew on, okay? I'll give you a little Boston pizza bit right mm -hmm. now, something to chew on. Yep. What organization would you rather be in the climate in Canadian hockey right now? Would you rather be the Toronto Maple Leafs where you have skill and talent that want to be here? For the most part, we believe that they do, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or would you rather be the Calgary Flames where they can't keep players? and play, You know, what, what would you rather have? Yeah. And I was thinking about it the other day. It's like, the way these guys with the Brinkett and all the guys in Calgary and Dubois and Winnipeg, they don't want to play there. Want to stay in the environment, want to stay in the market, but you might not win with them. Or would you rather be Calgary that can't keep their players happy and have to move 